But I do believe that there uh, that he was bottling up so many emotions that he was taking it out on me physically. I believe there was a moment where he knew that he didn't want to be in the relationship anymore. And instead of just ending it, he tried to push me away any way he knew would hurt me. And he knew all of the ways that would hurt me the most. And he knew he was hurting me. There was no way that he didn't know because of the safe word that he made. Uh, and he just didn't care. He was hurting me and he didn't care and even looked like he was enjoying it sometimes. Not long ago, the streamer, Shubble, also known as Shelby, went onto Twitch to talk to her audience about something very distressing that had happened to her a few years back. She talked about abuse at the hands of her then-boyfriend, specifically that he would bite her hard enough that bruises would form, even after telling him several times that she wasn't okay with that. At the time of the stream, she did not give a name, but a big part of her audience became convinced almost immediately that the abuser was Wilbur Soot, a content creator that my audience is extremely familiar with. I'll get back to that. The people took to Twitter, or X, whatever, no one cares, to give long threads on the evidence that it must be Wilbur, discussing very understandable reasons as to why Shelby would not name the guy, including his fame. Shelby never confirmed anything, but a huge number of people were already distancing themselves from Wilbur. And then, the debate basically came to a screaming halt when Wilbur posted a response to her stream, not quite a week later. If people weren't convinced of his being an abuser at that point, this apology certainly seemed to cinch it for them. In it, Wilbur remarked that he wanted to offer his perspective, admitting that he did indeed cause a lot of pain to his ex-girlfriend, before immediately emphasizing that he's changed as a person. Actually, most of the statement was geared toward himself and his own feelings, and absolutely none of it can be considered even close to an apology. It ended up simply being an acknowledgement that what she went through was very real, with a claim that he wasn't aware of her pain at the time. Now, I don't actually want to talk about this situation in too much detail. It has been all but confirmed that Wilbur was abusive towards Shelby. And I am not here to debate that or focus on any events or timeline details like many people have been doing. What I want to talk about is the impact this has had on the community surrounding Wilbur. In particular, the people that became fans of his through the Dream SMP or SMP Earth. Those people are the majority of my audience anyway, so that's who I'm trying to address. When news of this came out, the response was a drastic, almost violent switch from complete faith in and admiration of Wilbur to a very thorough shunning of him as a creator and as a person. Speaking specifically of fanfic writers, some have been changing his name in their works, if they're even still writing at all, and other writers have been archiving their works, or cancelling unfinished ones, and still others aren't sure what to do now. I actually talked to Bones and the Bees about this, the author of Tommy and It's Clinic for Supervillains, and she was very helpful in getting me to figure out some of my thoughts, and this is what she had to say. It was rough when the news initially dropped. Like, I know there was a lot of people arguing at first when Shelby first streamed, um, whether she was talking about Wilbur or not. I knew from the get-go that she was talking about Wilbur. It was just incredibly obvious, to me at least, and to most people I knew. So, it was immediately morning, and I just was devastated realizing that this community I'd been writing for for so long was going to go up in flames. Because I just, I kind of, I just did it. Well, death sentence. Artists have been affected. Fans of Lovejoy have been affected, particularly those who paid for merch. People who were watching Sorry Boys videos. People who grew up listening to his music. Much of his audience were pretty young and pretty invested. And therefore, deeply negatively affected. To be clear... I recognize that there are more important things that need to be addressed, other than the loss of some fanfics or some pieces of fan art. Shelby was abused, 
Other people, friends, girlfriends, associates were hurt as well. And support for them should be what gets talked about the most. However, as soon as this happened, I became aware that there were many whose emotions and mental health took an absolute nosedive after hearing the allegations made against a beloved content creator. The fanfics inspired by him, that included a characterization of him or even placed him in a starring role, now look like complete wastes of time for many authors. All of their effort now feels wasted, or, in some extreme cases, that effort feels complicit. They feel guilty by association. This is not true. Of course it's not true. Wilbur's actions are his own, and he alone deserves to be condemned for them. For anyone who felt like this, or who still feel like this, I want to be clear. You liking and admiring Wilbur as a content creator for the past few years does not make you a bad person now. You were hurt by someone who you thought you could trust, and you need to give yourself time to mourn the loss of that trust. The fact is, Wilbur was a massive part of this community's creative inspiration, particularly in relation to SBI, or Sorry Boys Incorporated. SBI is by far the most popular subgenre of Minecraft fanfiction, at least from what I've seen, for several reasons. One of which is because the focus on found family is rarely seen in any other medium, and certainly not in as interesting a dynamic as theirs was. Probably a more pertinent reason is because it's one of the few ways that we were able to keep Technoblade's memory alive. Either way, Wilbur was a frequent character in those stories, often as a protagonist. Of course, it would be an awful feeling to realize that this person you built an entire story around turned out to be a horrible person. How do you cope with that? What do you do now? Like I said, many authors are continuing their stories, many have put a pause on writing for now, and many others are unsure what to do. But I want to talk about another option others have taken. The option that I think is going to be the dominant one soon enough. I think many artists and authors are going to move on to other fandoms or dive into original creations. See, the Dream SMP fandom has sort of been limping along for a while, kept alive because of the many creative works that it leaned on like a crutch. Dream's allegations degraded it further, and of course, Technoblade's death was hard for everyone. But the fandom continued to endure. Until now. I believe these recent events were truly the killing blow. And the Dream SMP can't go any further than this. That's not to say it will leave us completely. In fact, I wanted to try and inject some hope into those of us who have invested so much time, devotion, creative energy into this community. This death of the fandom doesn't have to mean pure end as creators, does it? Take as much time as you need to process, mourn, figure out what you're going to do with all those Lovejoy posters on your wall, and then move on. I did know that this was the end, and I had a lot of emotional, a lot of emotion about that. And I did have a crying breakdown at one point, just over the community and the loss of that. And it was tough, but now I'm at a point where it's like, we're seeing the dust settle now, you know? We're starting to see where everyone's landing. And it's only been two weeks since Shelby first did her stream. So we still have quite a while before everyone kind of settles down. But we are starting to see where people are moving. And yes, there's a lot of people moving out to completely different films. But again, there are there's also a lot of talk about reclaiming the character. And you know, making him our own and continuing to create content for SBI and everything. So I do think that, you know, we're all still going to be creating and there is hope. I predict that there is going to be a noticeable shift within the internet landscape as Dream SMP fans disperse and begin to inhabit new fandoms. There's already been an increase in 
bat family fans, for example, to satiate that love of the found family trope. There's been increases in Technoblade fiction, and increased excitement for Tommy's American tour going on right now. Whatever weird niche corner of pop culture you choose to occupy, it will be lucky to have you. I've never seen or been a part of a community as rich with creativity as this one. And I'm actually excited to see what you all will do in the coming months. This was a devastating thing to have happen. But it's also led to many other abuse victims coming forward with their stories, gaining the confidence to finally expose their own abusers. Support and help is being offered to those who need it. And I hope that it's enough for those who need it. This violation of trust on Wilbur's part, and this shriveling up of a creative well does not have to be dealt with alone. To the anonymous poster in my Discord, for example, who insisted that there was no reason to keep living because your story was now a complete waste of effort, I am so sorry this happened. But not everyone is awful, and not everything is ruined. Maybe this is way off base. But these allegations seem to be coming out at a very important time. YouTube is shifting. MatPat's officially retired now. The QSMP is still around, for sure, but it's facing trouble. And I feel like, overall, it just feels like there's been a power shift. We, who spend so much time on the internet we're sort of on our own. And it's up to us to shape the way we want the internet to be. It's up to us to use these platforms for good, and I think, I hope, it will happen. For those watching who are wondering about me, I'm not done with YouTube. And I'm not done with audiobooks. But things will probably look different now, and that's okay. I wouldn't have it any other way. I love doing this too much to just suddenly stop. But I, like many of you, might need some time to adjust. I'm gonna have to figure out what it is that I want to do now. Every single story I've read about has included Wilbur in some capacity, and now I don't think they're going to. If you have suggestions for other fandom stories or for some story that is in the Dream SMP framework, but doesn't include Wilbur, then I'd love to see them. Or if you have a story of your own, you can share it. Maybe I won't read it out loud, but at least someone else will see it, and maybe that will make it worth writing for you. This was a lot for some people to handle. Is still a lot for some people to handle, but we're going to be okay. There's other things to make, other people to admire, and the rest of your life to live. You're going to be okay. Thank you for watching. And thank you to my patrons for supporting me, even when my schedule got so messed up and not consistent at all. You have no idea how much I appreciate the support, and I wish I could do more for you than just putting your name up on the end of the video. You are all incredible, and I hope you're doing okay. I was working on the sequel stories to Icing Those Hurts, and I was almost done with one of them. I feel like I've done enough on that that I might post it anyway, but I wouldn't count on it. And I also might just start putting up videos with me talking about topics that I want to talk about. I know there's a bunch of those on the internet, but maybe people will like me doing that. We'll see. We'll see how I handle this whole situation. Thank you again for listening, and everybody, have a good day.